Welcome back. This time we're talking about The Hitman's Bodyguard, starring Ryan Reynolds as an executive protection agent tasked with keeping one of the world's deadliest assassins, played by Samuel L. Jackson, alive so he can testify in international court against a ruthless dictator, played by Gary Oldman. The film is directed by Patrick Hughes, who gave us Expendables 3. So I wanted this movie a little concerned, despite an excellent marketing campaign that really played up the humorous comparisons to the original Bodyguard. Fortunately, despite some, I would say, filmmaking issues with this movie, it is really entertaining thanks to two great lead performances from Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson and the great chemistry that they had playing off one another in this movie. If you think about it, this is essentially um, a play on the buddy cop trope where you have the one who is very plan-oriented and um, always trying to think three steps ahead while the other is fly by the seat of their pants and let's just get the shooting. And that's essentially what we have here, except we have an assassin and a protection agent instead of two cops. But it plays out the same way with a lot of really good laughs. The film does try to juggle a lot of various tones and for the most part does a decent job with that. Uh, we have some scenes that are just downright hilarious, a lot of them involving Selma Hayek as Samuel Jackson's wife, and uh, most of those scenes involve her hurling one epitaph after another at um, a bunch of cops. And I will say it sometimes is a little jarring if you take a step back and think about the film as a whole, that these scenes are in the same movie where we see um, someone's family get murdered in front of them by Gary Oldman's character. So, uh, as a whole, there is a wide range to the tone. Um, but they do a good job of not going from one extreme to the other. So, for the most part, that worked for me, although I think some people might you know, wonder if they all really work together. And for the most part, the film's better moments overtake um, these concerns because, again, this film is very entertaining. Um, with some notable exceptions, the action is fun and entertaining. And, again, it, this film really rides on the comedic chemistry of Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson, and that is strong enough to carry this film through most of its flaws. And speaking of those flaws, I, I do want to talk about a few of them briefly. The first is something I honestly don't remember seeing in any previous movies. Um, basically, any time there's an outside, brightly lit shot, Everything is really, really shiny. Um, I'm certain there's a technical term for, for that. Um, I really can't think of what it is right now, but it's extremely noticeable, especially since basically from the very opening of the movie, the first several shots are outside in a brightly lit situation, and it's there. I honestly thought there might be something wrong with the projector in the theater I was in, uh, but there are a few scenes where that didn't happen, but it, it, it just it was distracting and very weird. The best way I could describe it would be some of the overly lens flared scenes on the bridge of the Enterprise in Star Trek Into Darkness. That's the closest thing I can come up with to a comparison to what I saw in this film. I honestly don't know if it might have something to do with the green screen work here because the green screen work is very uneven. Some scenes it's fine, there's others it's so extremely obvious that it's green screen that it's um, um, very just distracting again and some of those scenes did coincide with some of the shiny scenes but it wasn't always um, in the same shot. And speaking of the effects, some of the CG in this movie is not terribly um, good, um, especially with some of the explosions. It just looked very fake, and it's like, you know, I, just blow up a car. Uh, if, if, if you're gonna just kinda not go the full mile with the CG. Um, I know it's probably cheaper, and honestly, it looks cheaper. And it's, it's just it's an annoying thing in action movies these days. I can understand it for television with television budgets, but this is a movie. Let's 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 keep us to a higher standard here. And that's basically it for the broad strokes complaints. There's one other scene I did want to talk about because it was just it it, it was just really annoying. 
Um, there's a moment in the movie where our two characters have to steal a car, and one of them breaks um, the side window to get in, and it's sort of that whole fly by the seat of your pants versus planning um, motif. And it, it was played for last, and it was a good scene. <laughs> But in like the very next scene, we see them driving down the whatever the British equivalent of the interstate is at speed, having a regular conversation. And the one character who is sta sitting next to the window that was broken, his hair is not even moving. Um, there's no scene to show that they somehow fixed the window. They had no equipment to do so. So it was just like, if you're not going to follow through with it, don't give us the gag about the broken window. Follow through with it or, or just cut the joke. It, it feels like I'm kind of dogging this movie. and I'm, I'm really not. Um, I enjoyed this movie. It's, it's very enjoyable. If you like Ryan Reynolds, you like Samuel L. Jackson, um, you like Sam Hayek, um, they're all good in this movie. It's an entertaining movie. It's just, it's not a very well-made movie. The movie around them is not as good as the performances they give. And it just felt like if there was a little bit more effort on the production side, um, this could have been a really, really great, memorable movie. As it is, it's still very entertaining. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to recommend you go see it if you like R-rated action, comedy, thriller type movies. Definitely go see it. Um, I just wish it was a better made one because it easily could have been. So that's my thoughts on The Hitman's Bodyguard. If you've seen it, what did you think of the movie? And what did you think of some of the issues that I brought up? As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other reviews, and until next time, I'll see you at the movies.